How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Valentine from 2001. Uh, an appropriate choice because today is actually Valentine's Day, so uh, happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. Um, we're covering uh, Valentine, kind of a cult classic uh, slasher movie from uh, 2001, which it's 2021, actually makes this movie 20 years old now. It's its 20th uh, anniversary, which is crazy. Um, this kind of falls in the genre of slashers like uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, Scream, and Urban Legend. And I think this is actually the same director as Urban Legend. And I don't tend to think of those movies being uh, too terribly old. And then I see they're actually turning uh, 20, which is crazy. Um, but anyway, happy 20th anniversary to this movie. I think it actually just recently got a Blu-ray release as well, which is a, a cool way to celebrate that uh, 20th edition Blu-ray from uh, Scream Factory. I, I should upgrade, maybe. Um, because this is uh, a better movie than I remembered it being. Um, I first saw this movie a long time ago, and I remember it being okay. Um, young Zach, when, <laughs> when young Zach saw this, he thought, okay, yeah, that's a cool movie. But then I started seeing all these people form this really good uh, community around it. Like, it really started becoming a cult hit, and you got a bunch of people talking about how much they like this. And I was like, okay, I really need to give this movie a rewatch because it had been years and years since I seen it. And um, I should have rewatched this sooner because this is way better than I remember it. Uh, and I can see why it has a cult following surrounding it. It's a really interesting and funny slasher. Uh, it's really got a, a good bit of humor with it. Uh, but anyway, Valentine from 2001 directed by Jamie Blanks, um, who I believe, yeah, urban legend guy. Uh, this stars M Marley Shelton, uh, David uh, Borenza, Denise Richards, and Katherine Heigl, and is based on a book by Tom Savage, and again, sorry if I mispronounced any of those names, uh, but let's go ahead and, uh, jump right into the plot. I won't be doing any major spoilers, so no major spoilers, but I do want you guys to have a basic understanding as to what this movie is about, and I do want to say my piece on a few plot points. Uh, anyway, we open at the school dance uh, 13 years ago, and we meet this kid named Jeremy Milton. Uh, Jeremy Milton is at uh, the middle school Valentine's Day dance. He has no one to dance with, so he's going up and asking various girls to dance with him, and hey, you know, at least he's got the confidence to ask some people, even though all the girls are turning him down, and the best he gets is a uh, maybe later. He goes up to another girl who is, uh, like him, kind of a social outcast, and this girl uh, doesn't say no, and when he holds out his hand, she takes it. Now we cut to a little bit later, and the two of them are making out under the bleachers in the gym, and quite unfortunately for them, the bullies see them and start harassing them, and the girl, not wanting to get harassed by bullies, throws the boy under the bus. She says, oh, I didn't want this. He was forcing himself on me, which is uh, totally a lie. Now, the bullies were wanting to bully someone, and they've just been handed an opportunity to say that the bad thing they wanted to do had a good reason behind it, and they have no excuse uh, to just not be as bad as they possibly can, which, uh, sadly, you do see this behavior in real life. And they also, you know, don't bother to check if the information they've been given is true or not, and they're quick to judge this person without taking in the facts and being sure beforehand, and that really does a number on poor Jeremy Milton there. Uh, you feel really sad for him. He gets really, really beaten up and really just emotionally scarred during this opening scene, and you get to see him 
with this bloody nose that will come into uh, play later on in the movie. Uh, but a very sad, traumatic scene for him there. Um, we cut to the present, uh, 13 years after the prologue, so all these girls are grown up, they're all young adults now, and we see that one of them is on a terrible date from hell with this guy named Jason who refers to himself in the third person and thinks he's super cool. She gets out of there as quickly as she can and goes back to the school. She's a medical student, so she's got her cadaver there. She's going to practice on it, but she starts hearing spooky noises in this cool, big, empty medical school, and you eventually see that there is definitely a killer there, and it leads to a really fun, great opening chase sequence, a really good way to get you hooked on this horror movie. You get to meet your slasher character in this one, who has this uh, black coat, a knife, and a Cupid mask, so Valentine's Day themed, um, and after he kills her, uh, just like Jeremy Milton in the beginning, he gets a bloody nose. So this killer gets a bloody nose whenever he kills someone. Plus, he gets a cool, uh, a cool Cupid mask, which is very reminiscent of the Michael Myers mask while still being its own cool element. You know, it, it very unique yet nostalgic for, for classic slashers. Uh, but anyway, uh... The prologue girl, of course, doesn't make it, and all her other friends from the prom scene wind up going to her funeral, where they all connect and they find out that this one member of their group they hadn't seen in a little bit because she was off at medical school, and all the girls are living their own lives, and we get to find out a little bit about each girl. Your main girl, played by uh, Marley Shelton there, she has a guy that she really does like, but there's a problem because he's an alcoholic, and he's trying his best to recover, but it is not an easy thing. It is a, definitely a rocky road that their relationship's on, but he does seem to be trying his best. Um, you also get the other girl, uh, the one who lied in the middle school scene, and this girl... She's living with her parents, but they're incredibly wealthy, but she's never really found someone who really loves her in all this time, and she starts dating this guy that's clearly just with her to get to her money, you know, someone who is dating her so that she can give him money, and everyone else sees it, and she doesn't, and, you know, she just wants to have someone there. So a, a sad scene for her. Um, the girls eventually start having creepy encounters, and they all start to get valentines, uh, creepy, threatening valentines. One of them even gets a, a box of chocolates that turns out to have a, a nasty surprise in it. But these valentines are signed J.M. Now, they start to eventually go, J.M., isn't that the initials of Jeremy Milton? the guy from the prologue, and they eventually begin to discuss this story. Uh, the cop, who knows that the first girl was definitely murdered, is thinking about this. Uh, they look into his life, and after the girl lied about him, he went to a different school, then a juvenile correction school, and then to a mental hospital. But after he got out from the mental hospital, that's, uh, they don't know what happened to him since. So he could be out there and they don't have a recent photograph of this guy and that's where they ask the question, hey girls, how well do you really know your boyfriends? Which is an interesting question. You begin to wonder which of these guys that they're either seeing or who is hitting on them or they just kind of know, which one of these guys could secretly be Jeremy Milton all grown up, you know, and the question, how well do you really know someone that you're dating is an, an interesting question, but of course this all will come to a head when the girl from the beginning that lied is going to throw a big party in her parents' mansion 
for Valentine's Day and all the pieces start to come together there and you get a cool big finale sequence. It's a really cool location for the, the last half of this movie. But anyway, um, I guess we should uh, talk about the big things and one of the surprising elements of this movie was the humor. I didn't really expect going in that this movie would be near as funny as it was but this is actually a pretty funny movie that really does focus on trying to, you know, tell jokes and get some laughs. Now, after Scream, you had several slashers get humor through self-awareness and making fun of slasher tropes. And this is funny, but that's not where it gets its humor from. It's more making fun of relationships and stereotypes and how people can be really bad at relationships. In particular, all the guys that the girls see... You know, you get guys that are self-obsessed and unaware of their flaws, and then you get guys that they, you know, try to date, but they're just so incredibly boring. And, you know, you get wacky stuff like this artist that doesn't know he's a bad artist, and you do get some wacky characters. And I will say that the main girl, uh, her boyfriend has a serious dramatic flaw, and then all the other guys just seem to be played as wacky characters. And, you know, okay, maybe the humor does take away from the drama at some points, but this movie is really shooting to do humor up front, you know, first and foremost. So, I, I guess I get that. Um, so, yeah, a, a lot funnier of a movie than you think it'd be. A, a slasher comedy, but not just about slashers. A slasher comedy about romantics. Um, but anyway, uh, speaking of slasher, we should really talk about... Uh, Jeremy Milton, Cupid, in this movie. He's a, a pretty cool character. You see, with your silent characters, you do have to have a personality. You can get so many, you know, devoid of personality slasher killers that are just silent and stalk people and whatever. But the good ones, you can tell them apart. You know, Jason doesn't act like Michael Myers, doesn't act like Leatherface, and they all have their own personalities. As weird as this might seem to say, um, I kind of got the feeling with this character, it was almost like, a, I don't know if you've ever seen the video game Hitman, but the character, uh, Jeremy Milton, will have a loose plan and kind of interact with his environment and see, okay, I'm going to kill someone here. How do I go about this? Hey, there's an iron right there. That's perfect. Let's go. And it is really cool to see such a highly improvisational character. This killer does carry a knife with him, which is good. You know, you do have to have the base weapon at least. Uh, but barely uses the knife. There's one scene where uh, Cupid brings his bow and arrow. And you're going as Cupid, you gotta kill someone with a bow and arrow. I could even have used a little more bow and arrow in this movie. It was really fun to see a killer Cupid strike someone down with arrows. That, that was cool. But most of the kills in this movie are, hey, where am I? What can I do within this environment, you know? And that is really fun, having a character be so improvisational, but also really, really utilizing the environment. I feel like the best slashers use their environment and see what unique stuff is around them for a variety of different kills. And when you look up this movie, uh, YouTube does have, you know, a whole bunch of this character, death scene, you know, and it's like, you know, do you want to look for the, uh, the sauna scene, you know, the hot tub? Do you want to look for this scene or that scene? There's some pretty classic kills, especially that opening in the, the medical student room, you know, and they get things like hiding in the body bags and stuff, really looking at your environment. But with the kills in this movie, you get the setup and the buildup, which is very important. A lot of people just cut to the scary stuff, but without the proper buildup, you don't really get the scares later on. So you have to have, see the, the big set, see the danger before she does, where you know he's stalking her, and then once she knows there's danger, a good chasing, a good improvisional fight, where they're both using things in the environment to their advantage and to attack the other, and then coming up with a cool and unique kill every time. This movie has a ton of humor, but 
it's also a really good horror movie, you know, and it's good to have both elements going, and I feel like a lot of movies would just make it silly and then lax on the horror, but having both of them going, it makes this really, really good, and you really do have to see it. Now, as far as flaws, this movie is, you know, like I said, way better than I thought it'd be going into it. And yeah, sometimes they do sacrifice some drama at the expense of the humor. Uh, but other than that, the only real flaw with this movie is uh, a few of the red herrings. There's, you know, a few characters that it's like, hey, do you think this guy might be Jeremy Milton? I'm like, no, no, it's not him at all. Uh, the guy from the beginning on the, the terrible date, uh, Jason someone, they're like, hey, this might be Jeremy Milton. We're going to bring him in for questioning. I'm like, no, no one believes that one's Jeremy Milton. Now, it does still pack some surprises later on, and I'm not saying you can totally see where this movie's going, and there are some twists, some really good twisty moments, you know, towards the end, multiple of them that are really, really interesting. I'm just saying that a few of the red herrings are kind of obvious, but then again, sometimes I wonder, maybe they're supposed to be obvious, maybe that's just humor, a, a joke at that point. So, I'll let it slide, but really, this movie's pretty good and there's not much wrong with it. I really wish I'd rewatched this sooner and I see why this movie has such a cult following. All in all, a very pleasant surprise and I don't know why young Zack didn't get this movie as well as he should have because I rewatched this and I liked it way better than when I first saw it. So I'm really glad I rewatched this and I definitely recommend if you want a slasher with humor, um, in particular dating humor, not so much slasher-based self-awareness humor, but a good slasher with humor, but also good horror and some really great horror scenes and some really inventive kills, this is actually really, really good, and I definitely recommend it. Um, anyway, happy Valentine's Day uh, to everyone who's watched so far. Thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you for really helping this channel out. I do primarily horror movies on here, like 95% horror, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, I recommend uh, sticking around and seeing what else I have. I'll put a relevant playlist here on the bottom, probably a Slashers playlist, so if you want to see more, you can go there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Uh, relevant playlist on the bottom, and of course, happy Valentine's Day.